thank you for joining us for this, I would say, uh, last um, webinar about post-processor. It will be, for example, for sure, part three. And uh, maybe you, you know that from the previous webinars, I mentioned something regarding to uh, our parameter post machine. And uh, I've used in my ex examples some of the um, kinematic sets and I mentioned it that I will explain it a little bit in the in some close future uh, in, in future webinars so we come to to that webinar and uh, that some of the topics that I will pass it is of for for sure what are what is the advantage of using post machine parameter and for sure what it's coming from that that parameter or understanding the main coordinate sets like L pose, H pose, M pose, and so on will pass through this webinar. And <clears throat> for sure, I will add at, at the end some of the most important variables that I'm using in every uh, post processor of the five axis. You know, some of you, you uh, I, I've gotten so much uh, questions. You know, how SolidCam calculates some of the variables and which one of the, uh, them I, I should use in um, in my five axis posts. So this will be a webinar about that. And let's just start about advantages of using the post machine yes parameter. For sure, this parameter is located in in our, our VMID file, and uh, it's basically you, you can go to the working style uh, and here you, you will see the post machine yes parameter and there is a trigger for yes or no. Now, Solid can generate this parameter in order to get correct axis and rotary uh, limits calculation. This is, I will say, one of the very important one. Then to support five axis machines that don't have smart cycles. So I, I'll I'll talk a little bit later about what I mean about smart cycles. And for sure for supporting very complex Milton machines. Now on the left side, what I have it's just regular Haas machine that's that's coming like with like a three axis configuration, right? And many of you saw that you can in addition to, to, to this machine buy a, a device that will upgrade your three axis machine to the four axis or five axis, right? Now the thing that customers don't know is the, the when you do that, also the controller needs to be updated. Now, many of the customers don't do that because it's pretty expensive. This is one of the reasons, and uh, it, there can be many reasons. Uh, some of the customers just really don't know. And to run, for example, this machine in five axes without the cycles, it's not possible without buying extra uh, cycles on, uh, on and, and functions on the machine. So SolidCam generate one of the very nice features in order to support also this kind of machines. It's I think it's it's a, it's a great thing and uh, I will show you uh, how to use it and uh, for which type of the kinematic what ki kinematic uh, coordinates that you you can use. <clears throat> and in the past, uh, past two, two webinars, I, I explained you where to put your coordinates, uh, for example, for the turret, where it should be located for some specific cases, where it's your submachine, what does it mean, and, and so on. And um, we'll d discuss more about uh, 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 it, what, how we can control each of these points that are on the, my picture on the right side. So it's for sure coming from, I will just go back a little bit. All those coordinates that we have here, we need somehow to control it. The only way to, to control it and to take the kinematic that we define it in VMID, you can only do with the post machine yes parameter. Now, I'll go a little bit a little, uh, on, on the, our trace. Actually, what we need to, to develop our posts. One of the, I will say, I will just mention one of the very important facts what are the main change in, in, in uh, between post machine yes and no parameter in our trace? For sure, the main thing is adding new kinematic coordinate sets 
that are generated in our start of job rapid move line line five axis and this is the things that maybe probably already seen it and on the left side you can see the in in, in the past we have just the pose and H pose and on the right side you can you could see you know like H pose M pose O pose L pose and very frequently coming question was how solid can calculate it and how I can use it now also the second I will say and uh, very important difference between post machine yes and no it's on the left side you can see very old uh, T matrix routine uh, or I will call it procedure now um, that we are using it for the def definition of the five axis uh, machines uh, for the dexel movements to, to correctly define the, our position on in our environment of the machine and on the right side it's the new uh, uh, procedure called uh, rotate to plane I will say some of the variables that that was in the T matrix it's already the same you know in the rotate the plane but the main difference between rotate the plane and T matrix is that the rotate the plane take into account the VMID kinematic of the machine itself and on the left side the T matrix just calculate the 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 values vari variables and the angles between the coordinates so the kinematic is not taken in, into account of course you, you saw this picture in, in the previous slides and uh, what we what we have here on 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 it's of course on my I'll take just this example like a head table machine where we have on the bottom of the table we have the submachine of course here we have some very nice fixture and we have the part that is defined in our machine setup and of course this is our Mac position here we have the tool tip coordinate we have the tool station and, and target coordinate system now all of those coordinates are very important and it's it, it, it gets to the definition you know how I would like to, to, to control my uh, my machine and of course we can expect that for controlling each of these points we are generating following kinematic sets is the H pose L pose M pose O pose T pose T O pose R pose and RT pose now of course uh, the, 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 the time of this uh, I'll say uh, uh, we are limited time for, for in this webinar so I, I'll try to explain you all of those with uh, specific on the specific cases and how to use it you know for from the practical side okay and I will start basically from the most easiest one to the a little bit more advanced so first of, of them are for for sure the H pose set and I'll say it's the one of the most easiest to understand and uh, it's basically uh, the coordinates that are generated directly from your Mac position but it's very important that it's always from position one okay so no matter what kind of tool pads you have on, right on your part all those tool pads the H pose will be directly from coordinates itself and uh, <clears throat> the, 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 the thing is this H pose coordinate set you can use you know for those machines that are capable to convert part coordinates to machine coordinates actually what does it mean I will say the H pose said you can always and only use I will say uh, for the five axis simultaneously op operations okay so it's not usable for for the indexial movements so just for the five axis okay for the machines that has the RTCP it's the rotation tool center point function now, of course, what is the RTCP in, 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 in real life? When you come to the five axis machine, in, you, you are in front of that machine. You put the part on, uh, on the table and when you, when you hit the, the RTCP function and start to rotate your, um, um, your table, in these cases, the coordinate system is rotating together with that uh, rotation. Okay, so it's 
very kinematic uh, sensitive, okay, in that case. Now, one of the, I'll, I'll, talk, I'll talk also about the controllers. N none of those uh, functions are, are uh, totally free. For example, if I took um, uh, the FANUC, this is an extra function. For example, in, in, uh, in Heidenheim, this is a, Heidenheim, it's a standard function, okay? So, you need to pay attention. Uh, whenever you are in front of a machine, the controller, it's very important to understand its function and what it's capable for. So it, it doesn't mean if you have five axis kinematic that you can completely run five axis with the H post set, okay? And uh, the second, I will say also very important thing that this, uh, the, the H post set, you can run uh, the Cartesian inter interpolation in your Milton machines when you want to run the X, Z, C axis. And I'll, I'll show you one example after, after this one, what, what, what I mean really about it. Now the second I will say <laughs> very easy coordinates is said that it's, um, that I will show you today, it's the ELPO set. And uh, in, uh, in comparing with the H pose that it's coming from always from Mach 1 position 1, the L pose means it, it's, it's the prefix for the local, okay? And you're getting the coordinate sets from, from oh, sorry, your coordinates from local coordinate system, okay? So it can be map one, position two, three, four, and so on, and so on. Now here on the, on the right side, I have a very nice example of uh, cleaning the surfaces with the, just with the face mill, and this is just the toolpad, okay? And uh, for each rotation and each coordinate system, we are getting, you know, the starting point. And here I just put, you know, something from the trace. It's like, for example, I took this example for, for position four. So if I take this coordinate, for sure, the L pose will be minus 135. This is the point, okay? And L pose, it's 10. On the Y, it's zero here in this example. So it's it's pretty easy to, un to, to understand it. Now, the L pose set, can be used just for the machines that are capable and have that, that are capable to, to rotate uh, the plane and have the work shift. Okay, so now we are coming like it, it's a like of of course like uh, the RTCP function. It's also uh, an, an extra on some controllers, so you need to pay attention. Also, H pose and L pose sets are never used in the same. Um, uh, how to say, uh, in the same way. The H post set you will always run, always for the five axis, simultaneously movements, and the L post set you can run, you cannot run with uh, with the five axis simultaneously, but you can run it just for the positioning, okay? Now I'll just j jump to, to one of the examples. Okay, and just to explain you those two coordinates, you know, the H post set and uh, and the elbow said, I'll do it very quickly. Uh, it's the right example that uh, we have in the, in the in the presentation slide. So um, the H post said, all the all the um, toolpad that you can see here, it's coming right from this m specific Mac position. So all it's generated for that and the positioning movements, it's not useful with the H post set. Okay, so you need then to run the local one. If I jump to the coordinate system manager, you can see all my uh, coordinate position for specific MAC. Okay. And of course, uh, the ELPO set, it's all, only can, I, I mentioned it for the work plan rotation, but also you need to have the cycle to, to shift the coordinate system to, to specific position. And the, the, the variable that it's, uh, that it's working for that is, for example, shift X, shift Y, and shift Z. Where from the specific Mac position, Mac 1, you have a shift to the position active one. And here I have one very nice example. It's getting from the FANUC, you know, the, the function of the GE68.2. This is exactly what I mentioned. This is the function of the machine for work plane rotation and work shift. Okay, where the, the first three, it's always X, Y, Z shifts, and I, J, K, it's the, um, the, uh, the Euler angles for the work plane rotation. 
Okay, that that was pretty easy ones. Now, now let's go to to some uh, a little bit advanced, and I'll start from the Ampo set. Now the first thing that you need to always understand is that the the Ampo set you will always get absolute coordinates from defined machine zero to the tooltip. Now. Uh, this coordinate sets um, it's used for the machine that I explained in the second slide. For example, the, the has that was there. And if you want to run this machine with five axes uh, uh, for the machine that don't have smart cycles, then uh, in table table configuration, I'll say definitely use the Ampo set. Okay. Now here uh, to to the, for the definition of um, to, to, to get correct Ampo's coordinate set, all definition that we have in our VMID, it's taken into account. So what that means, the, the, the pivot of the rotary axis, okay, where it's your submachine define it, and the machine setup. This is very important. Right on the, on the picture on the right, you can see that I, we put our submachine in the center of the rotation table. In the real life, this will be really your G54 on the machine. Okay, that will be not movable while your rotation of the table is it's performed. Okay, so and then in the in your solid camp we need to correctly define where it's our Mac regarding to our G54 and all the toolpad that we will get it's it's coming from this specific point. So we we are pushing solid cam to 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 calculate all the values regarding to our submachine. To the tooltip. This will allow you to 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 control all your positioning and the simultaneously movements on uh, machine like uh, the ones that don't have the smart cycles. Okay, and here I just put some comment. It's mostly you can use it uh, uh, for the table table kinematic. Okay, and another picture. It's uh, here we, you can see the submachine. It's not rotated together with with the table rotation. Okay, so the the, the G54 it's always uh, not move it, move it. Okay, and all the position you will get in this example it's X ampos, you know, and the Z ampos is here. And in this example, I just remove the Y axis. Okay, here. Okay, uh, now one 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 thing. Um, all if if you will have any uh, uh, questions in in the close future, and you 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 have these kind of machines, and you want to support it, and you are not 100% sure, you can always uh, contact me personally if you don't know how to set up it. Okay. Now let's we are coming to one very important, I will say, uh, coordinate set. It's the OPPO set, and I'll it's not uh, that useful for the for the milling and either wise, of course, there is an, an example where you can use it, but I will say it's ideal for the old turning and milton machines, um, where all the, the coordinate sets you are getting from Mac position, okay? So none of the um, uh, machine setup is taken into account. There is no uh, question about submachine, so right from the position itself, okay, Mac position. But, but the good thing about this coordinate that you need to always look at it that it's not movable. So it's like, it's not like the H pose where the rotation with the part, it's following that part, okay. So it's not rotated with the movements of the rotary axis. And this is the real good example of, of why I said it's ideal for the turning and Milton machine. Here in this example, I have here, of course, you can use it also for the milling when you have the C-axis rotation and also the rotating the part. Uh, the, this coordinate system, it's not following this rotation. So you can always, you know, get correct uh, coordinates for tooltip, okay? And here I, I said it's mostly for the head table machine, but you can also use it for all mill turns that has the... Um, rotary turret, okay, and you'll always get it from the tooltip. Now here I have, I put some G-code example where we have at this point here, it's it's like in X, of course, in the old turning and melting machine when you're running the 
the um, the turning tool, uh, you have x doubled. Okay, so this is very important. So you have the x, then we are going to our safety, and then we have simple phase turning here. Okay, and maybe you remember that I mentioned it in the H post. It's the running the machine with uh, with the x, z, and c axis. Okay, this is one of the very common um, functions that all Milturn uh, customers would like to use it. Now, what is all about? Uh, you, uh, from my experience, I never saw any any customer that it's using the y-axis, and, and even if they have it, you know, they they are not using it very often. Just if they they ha they they need to. Okay, so in, but in the most, they will never run y-axis if they don't need to. So, and also it's very useful if you have, for example, very very large part, you want to run your tool on that diameter that it's not possible to run it so much in the y-axis. So all the, you maybe saw it, but all the Milter machines don't have so much y-stroke. So it, it's like in most like plus minus 50, 75 until the 100. Maybe it's going a little bit more, but believe me, it's, it's always the y-axis is not going too much, okay? So therefore, the, all the customers would like to use the c-axis rotation as the compensation of this c-axis. Oh, sorry, of this y-axis, okay? Now, the I'll go back a little bit to the H-pose. If you want to run this with H-pose, uh, that means that you're running with the Cartesian mode, and this is also a, a, a extra on your machine. Uh, for example, I took the example from the Mazak, the, the function of G12.1, the um, Milton uh, guys, uh, I guess they, they know it. Um, where you need to get the, the the coordinates from the part itself, and the, the, the this function will automatically compensate the the y-axis uh, with the c-axis. Now, what if you don't have this function on your machine? This, this is uh, I, I've faced it with so many uh, machines that I, I've come there. There's uh, like two or three uh, same machines, you know but they have totally different functions, you know. And customer would like to, to use this, right, uh, to have the same movements, even if they do, didn't buy it, okay? So we ha that's why we have in SolidCAN developed post machine in, to, to physically move your tool uh, in, in the movements like X, Z, C. And uh, here in this example, I've just export one of the toolpath where you can see here my X O position, right, uh, and my A pose and Z pose is the right position of your tool, and as you can see here, the Y axis it's zero. This is what actually customer it's they 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 need it. Okay. Now the T pose set. Getting the it's it's the getting absolute coordinates from absolute defined machine zero to the pivot point. Now, uh, as you can see on the right picture, I, I took uh, this as a, a head table. Uh, it's m most easier to, 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 to understand it. It's, uh, uh, it's basically coordinate from sub coordinate system until the, to, to, to the pivot point. Now, this is the ideal coordinate sets for for all the machines that don't have two lane compensation function, okay? And for example, for those who don't have plane rotation cycle and RTCP, okay? So this is a little bit more uh, bigger problematic uh, in comparing with the table table because here you have pivot point that it's for some of the customers n n unknown length, okay? So you need to physically measure it and, and put it into the solid cam very precisely if you want to get correct uh, uh, correct uh, uh, control over this point. Okay, so the, the it, I, idea is to, to control always the pivot point. 
Now, the, the very important fact is that machine setup is taken into account, okay, the age length that it's defined, it, you know, inside of the part tool table, okay. So this length should be very precisely defined and also the pivot point should be very precisely measured in order to support these machines. The pivot point is defined with, of course, the target coordinate system and it should be very precisely defined inside our VMID. Now, <clears throat> this set, it's very important information. It's, it's used for the checking linear limits on the table table machines. Now you can uh, now you you may ask why we are using the T pose because here we don't have the on the table table machines we don't have any pivot. Now in the most of the table table your pivot point is zero. So basically the coordinate system of the turret, the station coordinate system, it's right in the spindle of the nose. Okay, so we are always controlling uh, this one. And all the limits are generated from this specific point. Now I'll just jump into one of uh, the, the PDS that I just go to the R, to, to Jinji Mori and just I open randomly one uh, five axis uh, table table machine. And you can see here that all the axis that, that is defined here, it's generally coming from the station point, right? And in the table table configuration, the station point is also uh, the, the, the turret coordinate system, okay? So whenever you are defining uh, the, the limits, define it from the turret coordinate system, okay? And here just the, the picture, you know, what is the XT pose, for example, in this case, is just controlling in all, um, um, it's controlling the, the, the pivot the coordinate system of the turret in, in, in every movement of, of the tool. The TO pose sets, I will say it's more or less combination with the T pose and O pose set. Uh, it's, it's behaving same like the O pose set except that we are not controlling our tooltip but we are controlling our station coordinate system. Now this is important for, for the head table. In the head table configuration, the TO pose set controlling the station coordinate system, but on the head head machine, we are controlling turret coordinate system. This is one of the facts very important. The machine setup, it's not taken into account. So as you can see here, we are getting it right from the MAC uh, position, but H length, it's very important here, okay? And mostly it's, it's been used for head table and head head machines. And also for uh, here I just put it like, of course, all those coordinates, it's uh, for those machines that don't, don't have two lane compensation function. And uh, here what I would like to explain you, one of the experience that I have uh, with a machine that it's like 20 years old, you know, and the, the customer bought, bought it like with the four axis, okay? The first configuration was the three axis that has this rotation head. Now, uh, from some time, uh, the, the customer decide, you know, to buy another um, device that will be around the X uh, that will allow him to perform the five axis movements. But the, the, the thing that he didn't know that he will not be able to, to run it because the specific controller don't have smart cycles. Now, uh, this, will, this was very win situation where I come, okay, great, let's, let's measure the, um, the pivot length of, 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 of the head and let's delete the H uh, length in your controller and we will all calculate that in SolidCAM. So in, 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 in the first side, the, the customer was, okay, uh, are you sure that we can run that? Yeah, let, let's try it. I hit the run button and he, for the first time, saw his machine running it in the five axis. Until that point, they never saw the five axis movements on that machine. So it was very great. And one of the, uh, another picture where I, I've used, uh, here it's just explanation of DO pose, but I also could run, you know, the T pose here controlling the pivot 
point itself. Okay, now the RPO set. Uh, one of the, I will say, RPOs with, uh, with the RTPOs, one of the most uh, not explainable uh, coordinate sets and many questions comes from, from those sets um, very often. Now, the uh, the, the RPO set, I will explain in this particular case on the table table configuration, just imagine it, it's like the MPO set. It's, it's behaving very similarly, okay? Uh, but from uh, MPO set, it's getting the, your coordinates from the submachine, okay, to the tooltip. But on RPOs, it's getting the coordinate sets from MRZP point to the tooltip. Now, now what is the MRZ? It's the machine rotary zero point. Now it's a, um, I'll say, um, um, theoretical intersection point between two axes. Okay. So in this example, I have like the A axis. The table is rotating around the A axis, and here we have the C axis. And in this example, you know, we have the C axis. It's just crossing you know, the A-axis in this point. I think in this, this is the mass query axis, and this is like 50 millimeters from the table. But on real machine, this uh, point will sometimes will not be uh, in the cross-section, you know. Uh, for example, the C-axis can be a little bit on the, on the Y, so you have, you know, the, the also the some, some uh, distance between those two axes. But like I said, it's, it's a theoretical uh, point uh, like an intersection between two axes, okay? And the R pose, it's coming from uh, that point until the tooltip. Now, the machine setup, it's taken into account, and uh, for the head table, it's not relevant, okay? So it's not, it cannot, you, you cannot practically use it in the head table kinematic, okay? So it, uh, R pose, it's the, the same like the M pose set then. Okay, and here I just mentioned it's uh, it's mostly you can use for the table table and head head kinematic for the machines that don't have the RTCP and and work plane rotation cycle. Okay, and the very last coordinate set that I would like to uh, talk about today is the RT pose coordinate set. Now, from practical point of view, this pose, uh, this kinematic pose, it's never, you will never use it, you know, in uh, for moving your machines, okay? This is just uh, internal coordinate set for controlling linear axis of your tab head table and, and head head machines, okay? So, I'll, let, 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 let's see what's what's uh, the real uh, thing behind that. So, here on the right side, I have one Milter machine, okay, where my turret home position, it's Define it here, okay? And this is my, of course, in my VMID, this I will uh, present as my turret coordinate system. And all linear axes that I would like to define, it's coming from this point. So, for example, this turret can go Z100, uh, 1200, for example, and on the X it can go like 600, right? So, all the, the linear axis will be calculated right from that point. And here is the example. I didn't move my target coordinate system, and in inside the job, I have the movements of my turret. And these movements, it's represented with my RT pose. In this example, it's XRT and ZRT for the better explanation. Now, the point is, if you well define your target coordinate system, uh, well, uh, your machine limits and everything, the real value of uh, your limits will be displayed in your machine simulation. But the good thing about uh, RTPOS that you can generate a G-code and get the uh, the, the error uh, error about the uh, overriding the machine limits right from your trace. So as you can see here, RTPOS from the trace is totally same as in the axis control in your uh, machine simulation itself. Okay, so if you add your uh, your error about the limits, 
and you have the head table and head head kinematic, be sure you know to check this trace, okay, the RT pose. Okay, and the very last topic of today, it will be one of the important variables that I've used, you know, uh, for the five axis definition of the post processor. And uh, to, to today, of course, I'll just explain you the, the one that it's the one uh, of the most importance. And I will not talk about five axis simultaneously because the, for the five axis simultaneously, if you ever open uh, some of the posts of the five axis, you will see it's just uh, the line five axis and move five axis. But most of the of the resellers have struggled with the positioning, okay, of the real definition and true definition of your work plane, uh, of your shifts, um, that's coming basically from from rotate to plane uh, procedure. And let's let's in the few slides I'll, I'll explain you one one of the modes that I've used for the most common controllers and machines uh, that are on 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 the market. For sure, one of the most important um, variable in post machine yes definition and uh, and uh, uh, rotate to plane procedure is the first axis angle and second axis angle. Like I said, in, in I think in, in the third slide, difference between the T matrix and the rotate to plane is that the rotate to plane it's kinematic sensitive, and the T matrix is just um, angles between the coordinates. Okay, but here we are getting truly physical rotation of your uh, rotary axis. So no matter what axis angle for the first and the second you have in your trace the same output will be in your machine simulation as well in machine itself. Okay, so here we have like the position of the table table in zero position and here in 180 and minus 90 here. Rotate angle X, Y and Z. It's the calculation of your rotation in X, Y, Z order and if you here the terminology is spatial angles. This is the variables that we are talking about. Okay, so it's here I have one example where I have the Mac 1 position 1 and Mac 1 position 2. And inside our coordinate system data, we have the rotation between, you know, like uh, X, Y, and Z. Now let's analyze this. Uh, here I have one of this, uh, of, of the uh, Siemens controller, and probably some of you you know that with the cycle 800, uh, you can uh, define the work shift and the uh, rotation. You need to use you know spatial angles. So the spatial angles are very useful for the Siemens controllers and Heineken controllers. Okay. So, <clears throat> like I said, X Y Z order. If you rotate your X, okay, in minus 90. It's going in this direction to get the Z here, and then you need to rotate it 180, and you will get your Z in the opposite side. Trust me, uh, play a little bit with that, and you will always be able to 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 calculate yourself. You know what are the real rotation. Now, what you need to know that all the the, the rotation that we are getting in, inside the trace for the X and Z value, you need to inverse it. So you'll always need to put uh, the inverse sign here. So it's uh, if will be the, the the minus 90, it's it's getting like the plus 90. Okay. So this is internal rule. And also for the z, this is the same rule. Okay. So that's why we here you can see minus 80 and minus 90 itself. And here I just put one very nice example with uh, Heinenkein, uh, where you have the angle like A B C. And it's the same um, uh, same uh, philosophy in, 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 in Siemens. And very good example of those, uh, it's like in the chin matrix, it's just the angles between the, the coordinate sets, right? Uh, sorry, not the coordinate sets, between the coordinate systems. Now, the, the real physical rotation here, I just put, you know, the comment, like first axis is 180 and second axis is minus 90. It's very good for the operator to understand what will really happen on the machine itself. Okay, very nice and useful feature. 
Now we are coming to the same function, but for the funnel controllers. Uh, I'll talk about Euler angle Z, X, and deviation Z. It's the coordinate rotation in Z, X, Z order, okay? So here on the right, we have the, the here the rotation, but this is the special angles, okay? It's not the Euler angle. The Euler angle, it's, like I said, calculated in Z, X, Z order, in, like uh, in, in special, it's X, Y, and Z. So, so here I have like very familiar G68.2 with I, J, K, and here you just need to feed your your cycle with Euler angle and y the physical rotation on your machine, it will be done with these variables. Okay, with work plane uh, rotation cycle, we are coming to the shifting cycle. It's basically, in the, most of the controllers, it's the same cycle, okay? But you just need to defeat your cycle in the different uh, uh, way and with the different uh, variables, right? It's calculation, uh, where it's your position in comparing with your Mac 1 position 1 or Mac 2 position 1, no matter. Okay, and here in this example, you're getting this data from a coordinate system data itself. It's like uh, minus 85, minus 32, and you can see the same value we are using, and this is the variables that you can use it here to feed up your uh, uh, cycle. Okay. And uh, very thank you for, for, for joining us, and uh, this will be pretty much of it, and of course, for this webinar, it was not possible to, to cover all the things, but I'm very um, open to, to, to help you if you have some particular cases, you know, where uh, you have uh, the machines without the cycle or you don't know how to set up the VMID and you want to run it with the axis uh, open to, to, to help you how to set up it and uh, not just from the software point of view, but also to explain you when you go to the customer side what you need to do in order to, to, to run your machine. Okay, Eddie, I, I, I finish it. If there is any question, I'm very open to help and to answer on it. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you for this uh, great series of webinars. I think uh, this was one of the best uh, series we did ever for our resellers. Of course, we receive now many positive feedbacks uh, also uh, here in, uh, in the chat of the webinar. Great webinar, you have all very good explained with the very clear pictures and examples. Those pictures should be in solid comparable as well. Kind regards to the whole team that has prepared this webinar. This is one of the feedback, yeah? By the way, uh, Daniel, we, uh, we receive again the questions about how uh, resellers can download Notepad for GPP tool. This is, mm -hmm. we have explanation in our first webinar, correct? Yes, that's correct. If you go to the second slide, or I think it's third slide on the first uh, first presentation, there's, there's a link where you can click it. If you don't have, for some reasons, the, the presentation, or you don't have the, 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 sorry, the PowerPoint of 2013 or beyond, uh, just contact me personally and, and I will give, give you the link. Okay, uh, Daniel, thank you very much. Uh, uh, great webinar, and uh, uh, I would like uh, to show you again, yes, uh, where you can find the, the recordings of the webinar.